uh, I think we will start because it's uh, already time. Um, so our next speaker is Vlad Kuprianov. It's a pleasure to have him uh, with us. Uh, so he did his, uh, just some very short introduction. Uh, uh, he did his PhD uh, in San Paulo. Then I, I, I think uh, after doing some uh, postdoc at the same place, he moved directly uh, to Abese, uh, uh, where he still, uh, still, uh, still stays, uh, and I think will keep on staying. Uh, uh, during some uh, period he, uh, of time, he, he, uh, he did some long-term uh, uh, visiting to Max Planck, I think on Humboldt uh, Grand. Uh, so uh, I think his uh, uh, area of interest, uh, interest could be like generalized, broadly generalized, like different questions of deformation quantization, let's say, and, and whatever is related to that. Uh, so uh, today we will hear uh, more about his more recent probably interests. Uh, uh, I think it's the uh, gauge Poisson uh, theory. So please. Tell us about it. Uh, yeah, Sasha, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, well, I would like to thank the organizers of this nice meeting for the opportunity to speak here. And uh, yes, indeed, as uh, Sasha said, uh, possibly the main uh, area of uh, my research interest uh, is the uh, deformation quantization and what uh, is related to, to this field. And actually quite recently, uh, about three years ago, staying in Munich, we uh, were working on the problem of a construction of a non-associative star products. And uh, uh, doing so, we, we uh, uh, did it, uh, well, uh, we, we started working with the homotopy algebras, with L-infinity algebras, and from the L-infinity algebras, there was a link to the non-commutative gauge uh, theories. So uh, this is what uh, I'm going to talk about today. So let me start sharing my screen. Uh, Uh, do I think it is something wrong? Maybe try to unshare and share it down. Sorry, I will do it. Okay, I will try to do it again. Uh -huh. Okay, now. So here, here is it. Uh, today I will talk about the Poisson gauge theory. Uh, uh, the talk is mainly based on uh, this quite recent paper and also uh, on some on another papers in collaboration with uh, Richard Zabo, Patrizia Vitali, and Max Kurkov. So here is the brief outline of my talk. I will start uh, with the formulation of the problem that is a uh, uh, consistent definition of gauge theories on non-commutative spaces. Uh, I will start very briefly talking about the gauge theories uh, and non-commutativity and about non-commutative gauge theories. And then I will uh, describe our recent approach to the solution of this problem, uh, which is based on the uh, symplectic geometry, uh, namely on the symplectic embeddings. And uh, uh, I will uh, give all these uh, quite explicit constructions uh, uh, and, and examples. So let me start talking about the non-commutative, uh, uh, sorry, first about the gauge theories. Gauge theories is a, a fundamental mathematical framework uh, for the definition, for, for the description of our nature. For example, a classical electrodynamics is a gauge theory. And normally, uh, we follow the uh, following path to construct the gauge theories. 
our uh, um, uh, theory is based uh, mainly our construction is based uh, on on this object which is called a gauge covariant derivative it is uh, determined here in 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 red where capital a is a, a gauge connection a gauge field the main property of this object is that it transforms covariantly under the gauge transformations. Uh, since I will, I will need it uh, throughout the talk, let me, let me explain how it works, or let me remind how it works, actually. So if we calculate d prime from psi prime, where uh, uh, psi is, is the uh, matter field, it uh, transforms like here. Then we write just this expression here. And here we have the derivative, which should act on the product of two functions. When this derivative acts on the exponential, we will have this term here. And when uh, uh, this derivative acts on uh, the field psi, it will produce this uh, combination here. After that, uh, this term cancel this term. And we finally obtain this uh, transformation uh, law for the covariant derivative. But again, to obtain this, uh, uh, we were using the Leibniz rule, that is the derivative of uh, the product is equal to the derivative of the first one times another plus uh, the first one times the derivative of another, right? And already having in hand the gauge covariant derivative, we may proceed to the uh, definition of all other necessary constructions. For example, the commutator of two covariant derivatives uh, defines uh, the field strength. In this case, since we are talking about uh, the, the U1 gauge field, the Maxwell electrodynamics, it will be uh, abelian U1 field strength, uh, which is also gauge covariant. In this case, it is gauge invariant, but uh, for young Mills, uh, the field strength is gauge covariant. The Jacobi identity for the gauge covariant derivatives uh, implies the Bianchi identity for the field strength, uh, which is in fact the second pair of Maxwell equations. And then using uh, the field strength, we may construct the gauge invariant action from which we derive the uh, gauge covariant equations of motion, which are the first pair of Maxwell equations. So this is the standard path. How uh, do we construct the gauge theories? Now about the non-commutativity. Uh, actually, the idea of non-commutativity of space-time is quite uh, 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 old already, let's say. So uh, it appeared in the uh, early days of quantum mechanics. Actually, uh, starting from Bronstein, uh, he was a Soviet physicist. So uh, asking the following question, how precise uh, can be the measurement uh, of a position in, in space? That is, how small can be the error in this measurement? From the point of view uh, of quantum mechanics, to measure uh, the space with this precision, we uh, need to have a test particle with the uh, wavelength uh, proportional to the error of this measurement. Uh, this is from one side. From another side, uh, the Compton wavelength of the particle is inverse proportional to its energy. So increasing the energy of uh, the, the test particle we will increase the precision of the measurement of phase space. This is according to the quantum mechanics from one side. From another side, according to general relativity, each mass or energy creates uh, the curvature of, of space-time. And to each uh, mass, we may calculate uh, mass or energy. We may cal cal calculate the corresponding uh, uh, Schwarzschild radius, that is the uh, radius of a corresponding black hole. And again, according to general relativity, relativity we cannot uh, see nothing inside uh, the, the black hole. And that is why uh, the, the highest precision of the measurement of uh, space time uh, cannot exceed the corresponding Schwarzschild radius. And from this, we come to the definition of uh, the Planck scale, that is, this uh, scale of energies uh, where uh, the space-time uh, is becoming non-local because of the effects of quantum gravity, right? And then there is a question. So, okay, if uh, the space-time is becoming non-local on the very short distances, how can we introduce it in our uh, theory? 
Okay, again, uh, now uh, according to the quantum mechanics, if two operators do not commute, they cannot be measured simultaneously. So we can just suppose, we can impose it by hand that uh, the uh, operators which correspond to space-time coordinates, they do not commute. And this is the commutation relation for them. Where on the right-hand right side, we have uh, theta, which is a field, uh, the non-commutativity parameter, which describes the non-commutativity of space. So uh, in, in, in this talk, uh, we, we will uh, uh, keep that this is a given uh, field. We, we do not uh, really discuss how will it appear, so we, we uh, are talking about the given external field. In the most simple case, it is a constant, but in general, uh, it is uh, more reasonable to suppose that uh, it is a coordinate dependent field, right? Now, uh, uh, how, can, how, how can we construct the field theory on the non-commutative space? Uh, instead of working with uh, uh, functions, uh, well, uh, field is a function of space, uh, right, of space-time. We, we, uh, so instead of working uh, with functions on uh, non-commutative, uh, uh, of non-commutative operators, we may work uh, with the commutative functions. However, uh, we have to substitute the standard pointwise mul multiplication of functions with a star product. Star product is uh, this object here uh, written in red, which is defined as a deformation of the standard pointwise mul multiplication of functions. Uh, uh, the leading order deformation is uh, determined by the Poisson bracket, which is written here. And there are some higher order in H bar uh, terms. Uh, these higher order terms, they are constructed in such a way that the star product should be associated, that is, uh, satisfy this relation here. And as I said, the star product is non commutative. So actually working with the standard functions and uh, substituting the pointwise mul multiplication with the star product, actually we take into account this non-commutative nature of our space-time. For arbitrary Poisson uh, vector theta, the existence uh, of, of a star uh, product uh, is guaranteed by the formality theorem by Konsevich. And for some very uh, specific choices of uh, the Poisson vector, for example, for the constant one, we have uh, this uh, very precise, very explicit formula, which is a Mayal star product. Right now, talking about the non commutative gauge theory, it is not uh, uh, that, that simple in, in general just to substitute all pointwise product with a star product, because as I, I showed in the very beginning, uh, the construction of the star of, of the gauge theory is based on the Leibniz rule. Uh, the derivative of a product of two functions. And now we have the star product of two functions. So if this object here, theta, depends on x, if it is a field and not a constant, then uh, the, the uh, standard Leibniz rule will be violated because this theta enters the definition of the star product. And uh, therefore, this derivative will all also act on theta. So on the right-hand side, you will have also some uh, terms with uh, derivatives on theta, and these terms will violate the standard Leibniz rule. So because of a, a violation of a Leibniz rule, uh, the gauge invariance also will be lost. So if we just take some given well-defined commutative gauge theory and substitute everywhere uh, the, the pointwise product with the star product, then uh, such a theory uh, will no longer be gauge invariant. And thus we are coming to the statement of our problem. So we are looking for the non-commutative theory satisfying uh, two main requirements, two main conditions. First of all, we need gauge invariance of our theory. And second, we uh, would like to have the correct commutative limit. So uh, in this talk, again, I'm talking about the classical electrodynamics. So in the commutative limit, we would like to have uh, the U1 gauge theory. So in other words, we would like to understand 
understand how the effects of quantum gravity taken into account through the non-commutativity of space-time may affect their fundamental interactions. Obviously, this problem is not new, and uh, there were different approaches to the solution of, of, of it. So let me just uh, say a few words uh, about some of them. Uh, first one I, I would like to mention here is the zyber quitten map. Actually, in this paper here, uh, they, they also show how the non-commutative gauge theory appears as a low energy limit uh, of, of d brains. That is how it appears from string uh, theory, right? And the proper zyber quitten map is based uh, on this idea. It, it, uh, relates the degrees of freedom of non-commutative gauge theory to uh, their commutative counterpart. That is, you can construct the corresponding commutative gauge theory with different uh, interaction, et cetera. Uh, uh, what can we say about this approach? So the zyberg witten map for the constant tt was constructed uh, in this paper. But when tt is non-constant, the expression is extremely complicated. Uh, we have only a perturbative expression for the zyberg witten map. And it is known only in the very few orders in, in theta. Another uh, approach is the approach of the covariant coordinates, which was uh, proposed by the group of uh, Julius Vess uh, more than 20 years ago. And uh, the idea basically is the following. Instead of working with the standard partial derivative, we work with this operator here, which is defined as a star commutator uh, with the coordinate x a. Then, uh, you can solve the uh, uh, problem with the violation of uh, Leibniz rule. It just follows from the Jacobi identity for the star com commutator. Instead, you have another problem uh, uh, with the commutative limit, because in the commutative limit, star commutator vanishes. So in this case, this operator also vanishes and all uh, dynamics dis dis disappears. Another problem here is that uh, this problem is, is uh, approach works with the uh, universal enveloping algebra of gauge field. So in principle, we have additional degrees of freedom without clear physical meaning. Uh, one more approach is a twist approach, uh, for example, in uh, this work by Dima Vasilevich, possibly it was the first time when it uh, appeared. So uh, it was the idea to use the Hopf algebras for the consistent non-commutative deformation of gauge algebra. Uh, the problem with twist is uh, that uh, uh, twist uh, is a very, let's say, sensitive mathematical tool and, and it is uh, known only for very, very few examples of uh, uh, non-commutativity non parameter state. So for, for given arbitrary theta, possibly a twist does not exist. So in principle, it is better to have something more universal for the construction of gauge theories. And the last approach I would like to mention here is the approach uh, uh, that I have already uh, uh, mentioned in the very beginning. So the approach which is based uh, on the uh, uh, use of homotopy algebras, L infinity algebra, to provide a consistent non-commutative deformation of gauge theory. Uh, Actually, this approach was uh, proposed uh, in, in, in this work, uh, uh, our collaboration with the Munich String Theory Group, where we uh, proposed this approach. And, and uh, the approach is a really powerful tool for construction of this deformation. However, it is order by order in theta. If uh, we would like to have some explicit expressions in all orders in theta, it is better to, to find some additional considerations. So here in this talk, I will, uh, I will speak about this uh, additional consideration. Let me start with the definition of the Poisson gauge algebra. The non-commutative U1 gauge transformations denoted like this are uh, deformations of the abelian gauge transformations, which close this non-commutative gauge algebra. That is, the commutator of two non-commutative gauge transformations is again a gauge transformation, which corresponds to the uh, star commutator of two gauge parameters. So here we have this non-commutative nature of our space-time, right? For simplicity, in this talk, uh, we are discussing the semi-classical limit. Uh, 
In the semi-classical limit, which is determined like this, the star uh, commutator reproduces the standard Poisson bracket between two functions. So in the semi-classical limit, the full non-commutative gauge algebra transforms into this gauge algebra, which we called Poisson gauge algebra. The commutator of two Poisson gauge transformations is again a gauge transformation which correspond to the which corresponds to the Poisson bracket of two gauge parameters. <clears throat> and also we require the uh, correct commutative limit. So when theta goes to zero, we require that the Poisson gauge transformation should reproduce, should recover the standard abelian U1 gauge transformation. Right now, uh, the question is how to construct such a gauge transformation. So let us start with the uh, most simple situation when uh, theta is constant, when the non-commutativity parameter is constant. So here we may take this, uh, let's say, the most obvious uh, uh, guess for the uh, canonical Poisson gauge transformation, canonical that is which corresponds to the uh, constant theta. Right, so this is just a partial derivative of f of gauge parameter plus the Poisson bracket of uh, the field with the gauge parameter, and here we can uh, just take and uh, check uh, uh, the closure condition for the gauge algebra. That is the uh, commutator of two such uh, determined gauge transformations. This uh, first uh, line uh, written here first we act with the uh, gauge transformation according uh, which uh, corresponds to the parameter g. So we have this expression here in the brackets. And after that, we will have to take the second uh, gauge variation, right? Uh, uh, in doing so, we, we have this expression here. And in this expression, we do the following. The contribution from this Poisson bracket of df with g minus uh, dg with f using the Leibniz rule for the Poisson bracket can be transformed like this, can be uh, written like, like this, right? D from the Poisson bracket. Then the contribution of the double Poisson brackets using the Jacobi identity, we rewrite in this form, right? And all together, it nothing but the uh, uh, gauge transformation which corresponds uh, to the Poisson bracket of two functions. That is, this is exactly what we need uh, to have here. But to, to have it, uh, we use two things. We use Leibniz rule for the Poisson bracket and the Jacobi identity for the same Poisson bracket. And uh, this Leibniz rule holds true only if uh, Poisson bracket is, is constant. I mean, if theta is constant, if Poisson bracket is canonical. For non-constant uh, uh, theta, the Poisson bracket is given here. And since this theta now also depends on, on uh, coordinate, the standard Leibniz rule here is violated. So uh, uh, the same expression uh, uh, here will no longer work uh, uh, if uh, theta is non-constant. Right, so we will have to introduce in this expression some corrections uh, containing the derivatives of theta in order to compensate this violation of the standard Leibniz rule. And actually, quite recently, we uh, proposed uh, this new approach, which is based on the symplectic embeddings of a Poisson manifold, how to solve this problem with the violation of the Leibniz rule. So what are the symplectic embeddings? Suppose we start with some given Poisson structure. That is, we start with some uh, given set of Poisson brackets, which uh, obviously uh, should satisfy the Jacobi identity written here. And this Jacobi identity implies this relation on the given Poisson B vector. Right uh, now, to each uh, given coordinates x, we introduce additional coordinates p. So instead of working with d dimensional space, now we are working with 2d dimensional space. And these uh, additional coordinates, auxiliary variables, should be introduced in such a way that uh, uh, all new 
Poisson brackets should satisfy the Jacobi uh, can can be seen as as follows. We have given theta here, and we need to find this matrix gamma in order to satisfy these relations here. That I need uh, the uh, uh, complete algebra of Poisson brackets. Okay, these relations are equivalent to these partial differential equations, uh, equation on the matrix. Right, so the perturbative solution uh, can be written uh, like this here for any theta. Uh, the recurrence formula for, for this solution can be found in my paper two years ago in uh, Journal of Physics A. Uh, uh, for for uh, for example a constant theta uh, uh, we see that uh, each time here enters the derivatives of, of theta so uh, the derivative of constant is zero and for uh, constant theta we will have that this gamma is nothing but the Kronecker delta this is it and also what is important to mention here that uh, the symplectic embedding obviously is not unique i will discuss it in more details uh, in the end of my talk right so for arbitrary theta we have uh, the perturbative expression for the symplectic embedding of the Poisson manifold but for some specific choices of theta of the non-commutativity parameter we may also have some absolutely explicit all order expressions Right. So, for example, for linear Poisson structure, which is written here, and f are the structure constants of a Lie algebra, the expression for the matrix gamma can be written like this here. So here we have the matrix valued function. Uh, this expression actually follows from the expression for uh, the good star product, uh, good star product quantizes this uh, uh, Poisson structure, the linear Poisson structure here. Uh, for, for some uh, more uh, precise uh, choices uh, more, uh, of, of, of these uh, linear structures, we may have more precise answers. For example, if we take uh, the SU2 uh, structure, here is the uh, epsilon levi civita uh, So uh, this algebra uh, corresponds to the SU2 uh, Lie algebra, right? Uh, so for this Poisson structure, we have this expression for the symplectic embedding. Uh, for Kappa Minkowski, uh, the Poisson structure is given here. So we have this expression for the synthetic embedding. But uh, so these two are linear, but we also can uh, consider some nonlinear Poisson structures like this one, for, for example. Uh, this Poisson structure is, is uh, similar to this one, but this one is linear in uh, coordinate x. So for example, uh, these uh, this structure constants are, are growing in the infinity. And here we have this additional uh, fac uh, factor with the exponential, so uh, it will decrease on, on the infinity. But even so, we also can uh, have some very precise, very explicit expression for the symplectic embedding of, of this symplectic of, of this Poisson structure. So this is what I wanted to tell you about the symplectic embeddings. We have a uh, perturbative expression for, for arbitrary theta and for some uh, quite a large uh, class of explicit thetas, we have very explicit expressions for the symplectic embeddings. Now, how uh, can it help us uh, uh, with the problem uh, of the violation of the uh, standard Leibniz rule for the uh, partial derivative and a Poisson bracket? Instead of working with the partial derivative, we introduced the twisted derivative. That is, we take function and calculate uh, the Poisson bracket with the auxiliary variable, with the p variable, which is uh, defined like, like this here. Why do we work uh, with this uh, uh, twisted partial derivative first? Because when theta is constant, then gamma is just a Kronecker delta, and in this case, the twisted derivative is nothing but is nothing but the standard partial derivative of a function. Second, the fact that uh, we also choose that the Poisson bracket between the uh, auxiliary variables should vanish 
uh, and the Jacobi identity implied that twisted partial derivatives commute, just like uh, the standard uh, partial derivatives do. Moreover, here we have the uh, um, Jacobi identity. Uh, this is just a Jacobi identity for f, g, and p. And uh, here we can recognize on the left-hand side that we uh, also depends on auxiliary variables. Our original physical variables are the x variables. And now uh, uh, solving one problem, we get another one that uh, uh, this object now depends on auxiliary non-physical variables. And there is a solution to this problem also. We can impose constraints. So uh, actually, it, it was done in, in, in uh, this work in collaboration with Richard Saba. So we have introduced the following expression for the Poisson gauge transformation. It is given here. So we calculate this twisted uh, uh, partial derivative, and then we impose constraint. All these uh, auxiliary variables, P, should be equal to the gauge field A. And uh, once we uh, doing so, we may really check. Uh, it is technical. It is not very difficult to show, but uh, uh, so it, it can be found in this paper, right? Uh, we can show that such a determinant gauge transformations, they close the Poisson gauge algebra and have uh, uh, this uh, U1 gauge transformation in the commutative limit when theta goes to zero. So actually, this answers uh, uh, the original uh, question. Uh, are there any questions so far? May I ask a question? Last, last. Yes. Mm. Yes, please. Uh, so in my understanding, uh, all these deformation quantization procedures uh, tentative to construct the classical limit in a precise way. Uh, I don't know if you agree with this view, but uh, here you have these uh, auxiliary variables that now you're giving a scheme to how not have that in your model, but uh, it's it's non unique. Uh, your proposal, okay? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, is... so how it affects uh, physics? That's the, that's my answer. My question. Sorry. Thank you very much for your question. Thank you very much. I will discuss it in the end of this talk. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So uh, uh, here we have a gauge trans transformations. And now let us turn to the uh, dynamics of the theory. So the covariant derivative, uh, which we will need to construct all other structures, like the field strength, et cetera, et cetera. Now we introduce uh, the uh, matter field, psi, here. And uh, since we are working in the semi-classical limit, we define the gauge variation of a matter field like this, just like a Poisson bracket between the matter field and the gauge parameter uh, f. And uh, here there is a, a check that uh, such a determined gauge transformation of matter field closes uh, the correct algebra, right? What do we require from the covariant derivative? There are two main requirements. First, this object should transform covariantly under the Poisson gauge transformation. And second, it should reproduce the correct uh, derivative, partial derivative in the commutative limit when theta goes to zero. And actually, again, uh, the uh, answer uh, to the question how to construct such an object is given by this theorem, uh, which I proved in, in, in this uh, paper. Uh, this expression here satisfies the two requirements, that is, uh, this expression transforms covariantly under the Poisson gauge transformation and reproduces the standard partial derivative in the commutative limit if gamma is that uh, matrix gamma which came from the symplectic embeddings, and mat matrix rho should satisfy this equation here. So once matrix rho satisfy this equation here, uh, uh, such an object uh, can be called as a covariant derivative. In local coordinates, this uh, equation uh, can be written like this. And again, we may construct the perturbative uh, solution to, to uh, this equation here. 
if theta is constant, then this matrix row uh, is just a Kronecker delta, uh, just like it happened uh, with the matrix gamma now. But again, uh, for some explicit uh, uh, choices of an intermittivity parameter, we may have some very precise expressions, uh, all order expressions for uh, the matrix row, which determines, in fact, the uh, uh, gauge covariant derivative. So again, taking the linear uh, Poisson structure here, uh, we uh, obtain uh, this expression I have already showed, uh, the expression for the matrix gamma written in terms of uh, matrix valid function. But quite recently, in collaboration with uh, my student, Olavo Abla, and also with Max Kurkov and Patricia Vitali from Naples, we found this nice expression uh, for the matrix row. And here, actually, the expression for the inverse matrix. So here you see that, that it is uh, quite similar to, to this expression here, except for this sign here. Uh, here is minus and here is plus. And again, this is the expression not for the matrix row, but for the inverse matrix, right? And again, here we may write some very explicit expressions for uh, particular choices of the non commutativity. Again, for this SU2 like structure, which corresponds to the rotational invariant non commutative space, for the gauge transformation, for the Poisson gauge transformation, we can write this expression here. Uh, the matrix gamma I, I have already showed. So here is the expression for the complete non uh, Poisson gauge trans trans transformation. And here is the expression for the matrix row, which enters the definition of the covariant derivative. Uh, here is another explicit example, uh, uh, the, the Kappa Minkowski, uh, the, uh, the commutator relation is determined like this. Uh, the Poisson gauge transformation is given here and the matrix row is uh, given here, right? Actually, now already having in hand uh, the gauge covariant derivative, we may proceed to the definition of the Poisson field strength. This is uh, what we really need. So for this, we, for this we have to uh, um, construct the uh, commutator relation for the uh, gauge covariant derivatives. And it was done in my paper. And uh, we arrived to, the, uh, to this expression for the Poisson field strength. Again, gamma matrix gamma came uh, from uh, symplectic embeddings of the Poisson structure, and the matrix rho uh, came from the definition of the gauge covariant derivative. For this object here, what we can uh, check is that it transforms covariantly under the Poisson uh, uh, gauge trans transformations, and it reproduces exactly the uh, U1 field strength when theta goes to zero. Uh, in addition, we have uh, 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 the Bianchi identity for the <clears throat> Poisson field strength. It also comes uh, uh, from the Jacobi identity for the uh, gauge covariant derivative. So we have this expression here. Okay, now having in hand gauge covariant objects, we may construct the gauge invariant action principle. Right. So having this gauge covariant field strength, we may construct the Lagrangian in the very standard way, uh, just as uh, square of f. Right. And such a determined uh, Lagrangian also will transform uh, covariantly under the Poisson gauge tra transformation that is in, in this form as a Poisson bracket with f. After that, we need also to define the integration measure to write the action principle. And the integration measure uh, is defined from the condition that the Poisson integrated Poisson bracket of two Schwartz function uh, should be zero, right? Schwartz function, the function with the compact domain. So actually, <clears throat> it requires this equation on measure uh, mu. And for example, uh, for the SU2 structure, this measure is just constant. That is just a standard uh, measure. Then having in hand such a determined measure and gauge uh, covariant Lagrangian, 
we construct the gauge invariant action. The, uh, uh, this uh, action will be gauge invariant. So uh, we, we have what we really need. Uh, the theory is gauge invariant, and uh, this theory has the correct commutative limit. And here, uh, one more example. Example, uh, again, I'm, I'm taking this uh, particular choice of the linear Poisson structure, which corresponds to the uh, rotational invariant uh, uh, non-commutative space. And uh, for uh, this kind of non-commutativity, we may write uh, this uh, expression for the Poisson field strength. Right. So in this case, uh, the equations of motion are given like this. Uh, 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 the equations which uh, were derived from the uh, action principle. Uh, and uh, so this is uh, the non-commutative uh, deformation of the first pair of Maxwell equations. And the Bianchi identity written here uh, uh, represents uh, the non-commutative deformation of the second pair of Maxwell equations. So like, again, this is in principle what uh, we really formulated uh, from the very beginning. So we have uh, uh, these two requirements, gauge invariance and the correct commutative limit uh, to the undeformed uh, gauge theory. Now, uh, let me return to, to the question. Let me return to the arbitrariness in the definition, right? Uh, the symplectic embedding of, of given uh, Poisson structure is not unique obviously, because we take something and we embed it uh, into the space of, of double dimension, right? So for example, we have one given symplectic embedding. Then we uh, can make a change of variables uh, uh, such that the uh, original Poisson bracket between physical variables uh, will remain un unchanged. For example, we remain x unchanged and uh, just uh, uh, make uh, an invertible change of p variables, right? Then we will have another symplectic embedding of the same Poisson structure, right? So uh, quite a huge arbitrariness in, in the definition. And, and our construction uh, relies on uh, the uh, uh, symplectic embedding. So here we will have different gamma let us call it uh, gamma uh, twiddle, right? So uh, according to this gamma twiddle, we may construct different uh, Poisson gauge transformation, which however, will close the same Poisson gauge algebra, right? And uh, what is important here that these two, let's say different theories are related by the uh, invertible field redefinition which is uh, uh, determined here. This field uh, re redefinition satisfies the zeibert witten condition. That is, gauge orbits are mapped onto the gauge orbits, right? And we have the same uh, 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 gauge algebra. So in principle, uh, uh, the uh, theory is not unique. The, uh, symplectic embedding is not unique. You have an infinite uh, uh, number of, of different ways how to construct these symplectic embeddings. And obviously you will get different uh, gauge theories uh, which uh, correspond to the same Poisson structure. However, different theories are related uh, by the Zyberg with map, that is physics is the same, right? So uh, so this is, this is the, the answer that we need. And uh, now let me start uh, with the discussion. First, I will, I will uh, uh, list the things we have so far, and then I will uh, uh, switch to the open uh, questions, open problem. Uh, first, Poisson gauge theory is a self-consistent approximation of the full non-commutative gauge theory. That is, we have uh, uh, first order in H bar approximation. However, uh, to have explicit constructions, we need all orders in the non-commutativity parameter T, right? Uh, the symplectic embeddings of Poisson manifold define the 
Poisson gauge transformations, which close the Poisson gauge algebra, this algebra uh, written here in red. To define the dynamics of uh, the Poisson gauge theory, we need to introduce additional object, this matrix rho, which uh, has to satisfy its own uh, uh, equation. Uh, this equation, we know how to solve perturbatively, and for some precise, some explicit choices of the Poisson vector, like, for example, the linear uh, Poisson structures, we have explicit all-order constructions for everything, for uh, gauge transformations, for uh, covariant derivative, for the Poisson field strength, uh, for the equations of motion, right? And uh, as I, I, I said, the symplectic embedding of given Poisson structure is not unique, as well as the constructed gauge theory. However, different uh, field theories uh, constructed uh, following this approach uh, are related by the invertible field redefinition, that is, the corresponding physics is the same. So this is what we have so far. Now the open questions. Uh, uh, the original motivation behind uh, this kind of, of field theoretical model was the following, was uh, to uh, uh, construct, to take into account the effects of quantum gravity uh, uh, and understand how they will uh, modify our in interactions. But, uh, I mean, uh, the theory is quite new and uh, we uh, uh, don't uh, really know if uh, there may exist a, any kind of reasonable physics behind uh, this kind of, of gauge, uh, gauge system, right? So this is, this is the problem for the future. We have to think about this. So it would be nice to understand some, some important relations in this kind of theories, like the energy momentum dispersion relation. It would be nice to discuss some uh, possibly simplest uh, solutions of these equations. What, what really happens with the gauge field? What really happens with the corresponding physics? Also, it is important uh, to, to think about uh, 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 more uh, precise, explicit examples, more precise, uh, explicit physical examples. Like, uh, for example, we may also discuss uh, another uh, linear non-commutative structure, which appears in the context of non-commutative uh, ADS2 uh, proposed by Sasha Pinzel and, and Stern uh, in 17. Right? Uh, another uh, uh, possibility of uh, another direction where we may go uh, is the quadratic Poisson structures, which corresponds uh, to the quantum groups and Young-Baxter deformations of field theories. So in this case, uh, we don't really know if uh, uh, we may find some also explicit all-order uh, expressions for the uh, symplectic embeddings and uh, covariant derivatives or, or not. So perturbatively, yes, we may go till any order, but uh, uh, do we have, will we have a kind of all order expression? This I don't know yet, so this is an open question. And obviously we have to uh, think about uh, the full non-commutative gauge theory that is all order uh, in, in uh, Planck constant h bar. So uh, in this case, we have to substitute our Poisson bracket with a star commutator and uh, do all uh, the necessary stuff, do all the ne necessary machinery. And also in this case, we may take the gauge uh, variation of uh, the matter field, like just, just like the star product between <coughs> the uh, uh, gauge parameter and the matter field side, right? Another direction, uh, which also is mot motivated by the <clears throat> string theory, is that in string theory, we uh, may also have some non-associative de deformations, uh, which normally appears in the context, in the context of closed string uh, uh, theory. And uh, for the uh, non-associative spaces uh, earlier this year with Richard Zabel, we uh, have 
constructed uh, the semi-classical limit of, of such uh, determined uh, gauge algebra and uh, the non-associative gauge algebra in the semi-classical limit defines the almost Poisson gauge algebra. So we have constructed with uh, Richard uh, this, this year. And uh, the open uh, problem, the open question here is how to construct the corresponding dynamics. So we have gauge, we have uh, almost Poisson gauge trans transformations, which are uh, the semi-classical limit of non-associative gauge trans transformations. The problem is how to define the gauge covariant derivative, the field, uh, the non-associative field strength, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, these all are the uh, uh, open questions. And again, since I'm talking on the school and uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, students attending this school, possibly you may have some interest to this uh, to the subject to think about these open uh, questions, open problems. And, and uh, uh, if, if you wish, you may write me an email or we may discuss. So, so this is it. Uh, I think I'm, I'm done a bit earlier, but, but that's it. Oh, it's Thanks. Uh, so we'll have more uh, time for questions. I mean, so yeah, before you, you write uh, an email to uh, Vlad, you can ask directly him right now. I mean, uh, so oh, yeah, this, this is better actually. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, uh, uh, Alison, 